fondest memories I have involves wandering through the fields in my grandpa's backyard. My sisters and I would run through the corn, pretending that we were on an African safari, being chased by a dangerous lion, or throw a piece of wheat in our mouths and pretend that we were sheriffs from the West, attempting to catch the dangerous outlaws. Every year, there was a different game to play. As every year, there was a different crop. From corn to oats to soybeans to wheat to alfalfa, farmers would rotate their crops in order to ensure that their soil maintained its nutrients. However, in recent years, the fields have become a little less diverse. Farmers have traded in their habits of crop rotation and other conservation methods in order to initially bring a large profit. What many of these farmers fail to see is that conservation efforts can actually have a positive economic impact on America. So let's run through the corn to see how our recent lack of conservation is the dangerous line chasing us through the safari. Then, mosey on through the wheat fields to see the valiant efforts of conservation sheriffs across the county and the economic benefits ending the outlaw's crusades can bring the town. As we enter the cornfield, it becomes apparent that in recent years, the farmers have strayed away from their post dustful conservation efforts. Crop rotations have become less and less common, as farmers opt to sow only the crops that will bring the highest price. And the New York Times reported in 2012 that the number of crops farmers rotate has dwindled down to two, corn and soybeans. Along with mixing crop rotations, farmers have turned to reducing their shelter belts and weed control. When farmers choose not to replant the trees that function as a windbreak, they often fail to see the detrimental effects not doing so can have on their land and pocketbook. Shelter belts help to avoid the erosion of precious topsoil, which plants need to survive and can take upwards of seven years to replace. These strategically placed trees can also help to protect livestock, encourage weight gain, and increase crop yields by around 20% annually, ultimately making what the farmer produces a far higher quality, thus far more profitable. Shelter belts also help to save money used on fuel for snow removal as they can help control the drifting. Another problem farmers face when they choose not to participate in conservation efforts are noxious weeds. Various forms of noxious weeds such as Canadian thistle and leafy spurge can produce thousands of seed per plant. They can easily spread throughout an entire field in just weeks, devastate crop fields for years to come, and reduce land values by over 10%. States such as South Dakota, Wyoming, Nebraska, and Montana spend millions of dollars each year trying to combat this problem. Thankfully, however, we have a savior from these dangerous outlaws, South Dakota Conservation Districts. For example, the South Dakota Conservation Stewardship Program provides a supplemental source to farmers who are willing to participate in crop rotation aimed at conservation. This provides an incentive for those who are focused solely on short-term goals. Another group working to ensure a more profitable way of life for farmers via conservation is the South Dakota Weed and Pest Commission. They help to raise awareness of costly noxious weeds by mapping infestations in the state, but in putting on workshops to educate farmers on how to combat the issue. They work with farmers to rid their land of the invasive species and attempt to lobby for more state, local, and federal funding for education and eradication programs across the state. Conservation districts also help preserve shelter belt planting. Any farmer or large landowner can draw up a shelter belt plan and send it into their regional conservation district. The conservation district will then work with the farmer to ensure a functional plan, species diversity, and they can even help guarantee delivery from local tree nurseries. These conservation districts even go a step further in aiding farmers by providing free of charge assistance from the South Dakota Resource Conservation and Forestry Division of the Department of Agriculture. Together, these conservation efforts can help bring back millions of dollars to the state of South Dakota by ensuring higher quality crop and agricultural yields. If we continue to support conservation districts, we can see our outlaws and lions caged 
and put away, ensuring a better economic situation for South Dakota and America.